In this video, we're going to be talking about rounding. Um, so we start here with our ones place, right? And then our decimal would be right to the right of it. So as you go to the left, you have ones, tens, hundred thousand, ten thousand, hundred thousands, and millions. And it keeps going, but that's just a starting. Most students tend to struggle with this side of the rounding. We start with tenths, which is our first decimal place, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths, hundred thousandths, millionths, right? So you need to think about these places when you're talking about rounding. When you're talking about rounding, if I said round to the tenths place, so the tenths place is here, it's my first spot, I look at the digit in the next place, in the hundred thousandths, and say, if this is five or above, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I'm going to round up. So I'm going to take my tenths digit and go up by one. If, it, if this number here in the hundredth place is less than five, so it's, if it's four, three, two, one, or zero, I'm going to round down and I'm going to keep my tenths digit exactly the same. Okay, so we're going to try some examples to make it hopefully more clear. Real quick before we do, let's talk about a couple things. Round to the nearest dollar. So this is like rounding to the nearest whole number, right? The nearest ones place. If you had 599 and I said round to the nearest dollar, I'm looking at the ones place, which is my five, and I have a nine in the digit to the right, which is above five, so I would round up to six dollars. Okay, I'm rounding to the nearest whole dollar. Rounding to the nearest cent. Cent, one cent is written as 0 0.01. Right, 0 0.01 is one cent. So if I had 5.975, here again, I'm gonna look, if I'm rounding to the nearest cent, cent I'm gonna look at this seven is the one I'm trying to round because that's one cent. And then I'm going to look at the digit after it, which is a five, right? So that's five or bigger, we're gonna round up. So we want our new number to be 5.98, right? $5.98, okay? So looking at some examples, Round 0 0.9547 to the nearest thousandth. Okay, so when you have this chart, it's easy. You go tenths, hundredths, thousandths is the third place. Tenths, hundredths, thousandths. So my four is in the thousandths place. That means I want to look to the right. I want to look at the seven, which is bigger than five, so that means I want to round up to 0 0.955. And I just drop all the digits after that, because I'm rounding up. So now we have negative 0 0.32891 to the nearest tenth. So if you remember, that's where we start, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousand, hundred thousand, keeps going. But we're actually only concerned with the tenth. So the three is the digit we're looking at to round. So we want to look at the one after it, the two, and say, do I round up or down? Well, two is smaller than five, so we would say that we're rounding down. We don't actually change our number. We keep it 0 0.3, but we delete all of these digits after. And that's why we say we're rounding down because we're losing all of those digits. Okay, round 82.73 to the nearest dollar. Remember we said that dollar was the ones place, so we are looking at this two, and we're saying does the digit after it, is it bigger than five or less than five? It's seven, so it's larger than five, which means we want to round up to $83, okay? Round 7.1468 to the nearest cent. 
Remember, one cent is written as 0 0.01, so we're looking at the hundredths place, which is the four in this case. We look to the right at the six, that is bigger than five, which means we round up to 7.15, okay? Seven dollars and fifteen cents. Okay. So to add or subtract decimals, you write decimals so that the decimal points line up vertically. Add or subtract like whole numbers. Place the decimal point in the sum or difference so that it lines up vertically with the decimal points. So this um, really is just about the way that you set it up. So 2.23 plus 4.6, right? So I'm going to line up the decimal places vertically is what it says up here. You just want them directly over each other. What I would do is go ahead and write the decimal place in the answer, and that way you know that it's exactly where it needs to be. And then you can just add like you normally would. So there's nothing here. We could pretend there's a zero. Three plus zero is three. Six plus two is eight and four plus two is six, and that's my final answer, okay? Same idea with 19 minus 5.5, 19. Remember that every whole number has a decimal on the end, right? So if you wanted to add a zero there, you could. It's 19.0, it's the exact same number as 19, minus 5.5, and then I can subtract like normal. I'll put my decimal place in my answer so it's already there. Zero cannot subtract five, so I have to borrow make this eight, make it 10. 10 minus five gives me five. Eight minus five gives me three. One minus zero gives me one. So my answer would be 13.5. We do the same thing and make it a little bit more challenging. Now with the signs, right? I have a negative 12.4 minus a negative 11.7. So we would say it's not negative or we would add the opposite of the number that was there. So it's all it's a negative 11.7, so the opposite would be just 11.7. So I have negative 12.4 plus 11.7. Now if you remember from our previous videos, we take the absolute value of each number and we take the larger absolute value, which is gonna be the 12.4, and we subtract 11.7. Still make sure you're lining up those decimal points. Put your decimal point in the answer and go ahead and subtract. So four minus seven, we have to borrow, make it one, and it's now 14 minus seven, which is seven. One minus one is zero, and one minus one is zero. So our answer is 0 0.7, and we keep the sign of the larger absolute value, so it's a negative 0 0.7 is the final answer for that one. So this one requires that you use a lot of things that we've already learned in addition to what we're trying to learn right now. Okay. So multiplying decimals and dividing, I think we're also going to do, we start with multiplying. Multiply the decimals as though they are whole numbers. The decimal point in the product is placed so that the number of decimal points in the product is equal to the sum of the number of decimal points in the, fra in the factors. To multiply decimals by power of 10, such as 10, 100, or 1,000, you can move the decimal to the right the same number of places as there are zeros in the power. To multiply decimals of powers of 10, such as 0 0.1, 0 0.01, and 0 0.001, you move to the left. So when it's a decimal that you're multiplying, you would go to the left. When it's a whole number, 10, 100,000, you would move to the right. And you can always do this multiplication. You don't have to memorize this rule. You can still just do the multiplication, and that's an option. But first, just looking at numbers, what they said was is that we don't have to line up the decimals for multiplication. So I'm just going to write negative 9.2 times 3.4. I'm going to line it up like it was a normal number. And this one, the decimals happen to line up, but that's not what we're concerned with. What we are concerned with is how many decimal places there are in each one. So to get this to be a whole number, I would move it once to get it to the end, right? 
Also for this one, I would move it to the right once. So I'm gonna start at the end of my number and I'm gonna move it left, one, two. This is where my answer, the decimal point is gonna be in my answer. Again, I find it's easier for me to just write it in my answer and that way I don't mess it up when I'm trying to write my answer. So four times two is eight, four times nine is six and three, right, 36. Put my zero or skip my place, three times two is six, three times nine is 27. Okay, so down here, write my decimal first, my decimal is gonna come straight down, and then I add eight, six plus six is 12, seven plus three is 10, plus one is 11. Bring up the one, two plus one is 31.28. 9.2 was negative, so please don't make that mistake of dropping the negative. Remember when you have a negative times a positive, it gives you a negative. Um, there's a lot of steps going on in these. It's very easy to forget that digit, that negative, if you're not paying attention. So looking at the next one, negative 6.114 times 1,000. Again, we have this rule, if we choose to memorize it, that we would move to the right for whole numbers, 1,000, or to the left for decimals, like 0.01. <clears throat> Instead of doing that though, instead of just using the memorizing trick, I'm actually gonna multiply it out just to show you. Negative 6.114 times 1,000. So see, I'm not lining up the, mul the decimals because the decimal technically would be here at the end of this 1,000. I'm just lining up the numbers like I would normally do for multiplication. I look at the decimals and I say that the top number has one, two, three spots, right? So I come at the end and I say one, two, three. This is where my decimal should end, right? And my final answer, and you can do this step last if you'd prefer, just trying to help you remember that it does need to be done. And then I multiply. Zero times four is zero, zero times one is zero, zero times one is zero, zero times six is zero, okay? I put my zero, do the same thing. Zero times four, zero times one, zero times one, zero times six. Two zeros, zero times four, zero times one, zero times one, zero times six, okay? Now I have a one. I put one, two, three zeros. One times four is four, one times one is one, one times one is one, one times six is six, okay? I add straight down, I get zero, 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 four, one, one, six, and I bring my decimal point all the way down, which gives me a final answer of six, one, one, four. Using the rule that I said before, you would move to the right when you multiply by the a whole number, so move to the right the number of zeros, one, two, three, so I would take my decimal and go one, two, three, to give me an answer of 6,114, and it should be negative because it was originally negative times a positive, so it's negative. So either method is okay. If you find that you're not very good at remembering things, then it might be better to just multiply it out. It might take you a few more seconds, but you'll get the right answer. So here again, using 9.4 times, times 0 0.1, you have 9.4 times 0 0.1, multiply like you would normally. One times four is four, one times nine is nine, okay? Zero, zero times four is zero, zero times nine is zero. Add four plus zero, nine plus zero, and then I have to go back and look at my decimal places. So I get one from here and one from here, so I would start at the end and have one, two, so my end answer would be 0.94. Looking at dividing decimals, we move the decimal point in the divisor to the right until the divisor is a whole number. Move the decimal point in the dividend to the right the same number of places 
as the decimal point was moved in the first step. Divide, place a decimal point in the quotient directly over the moved decimal point in the dividend. The deci divide decimals by ta powers of 10, 100, or 1,000. We move the decimal point to the left, the same number of places as there are in the zeros. So again, this is where when you're trying to memorize can get confusing because when we multiply by a whole number, 10, 100, or 1,000, we move to the right. But if we divide by the same number, we would move to the left. Again, you still have the option to just multiply or divide and find the answer. Negative 2.5 divided by negative 0 0.05. So you take the second number and put it out front, divided by the first number under the division bar, right? And so up here it talks about the divisor and the dividend, okay? So you want the divisor, this number, the number that's being divided into the other number, to be a whole number. This number under the, under the division, the dividend, can be a decimal. So what that means is I need to move this decimal outside two places to make it a whole number of five, right? In order to do that, I have to also move this decimal place one, two. I put it up in my answer immediately, just like I was doing before. That way there's no worry about forgetting about it or where does it go. I'm going to put a zero in the empty spot I had. So now I'm dividing five into 250. Okay. So I want to say how many times does five go into two? Well, zero, right? How many five times does five go into 25? Five, which gives me 25. I subtract, I get zero. I bring down a zero. How many times does five go into zero? Zero. Zero times five would give me zero. So my answer would be 50, and this would be positive because I had a negative times a negative, which means I get a positive answer. Okay, using the same idea, 569.2 divided by 100. Remember, there is a memorization rule, but let's just say we set it up. We put the 100 outside, and we put the 569.2 under the division bar. 100 is already a whole number, so I don't need to move my decimal place. I can go ahead and put it up in the top in my answer immediately. I look at 100 goes into 5. No, 100 goes into 56. No, 100 goes into 569. Yes, 100 times 5 would give me 500. If I subtract, I get 69 and bring down my 2, so I get 692. 100 goes into 692 six times, which would give me 600. Subtract, I get 92. I add a zero and bring it down, 920. 100 goes into 929 times, which would be 900. Subtract, I, get, I bring down another zero, so I get 200. 100 goes into 200 two times and then I would get zero, I would be done, right? So my answer is 5.692, they were both positive, so my answer should be positive. Again, if you go back up and look at the rule, it says to divide by powers of 10, such as 10, 100, or 1,000, move the decimal to the left. So I started with 569.2, the number of places as there are zeros. I have one, two, zero, so I would go to the left, one, two, 5.692, so we get the same answer. The memorization is, of course, easier, but if you struggle with memorization or you get mixed up, you can always fall back on actually doing the division or the multiplication to get the answer.